The World Health Organization officially designated gaming disorder as a mental health condition. Yes, the World Health Organization claiming video games are addictive on the same page as alcohol and gambling. We're on your side tonight learning more about how this disorder could actually impact you and your family. We're talking mainly, I think, about your kids. Joining us now is Dr. John Kuffner, a psychiatrist from Peninsula Behavioral Health. You know, obviously sitting in front of your TV, a doctor playing video games isn't as dangerous as nicotine, alcohol, that, but what are some of the side effects or negative effects, I should say, about sitting in front of that TV for hours? I know well, if I let uh, my kids do it, oh, they would do yeah. it for hours. It, it is potentially that dangerous. A couple years ago, I read about some young adult, some 20-year-old something that died after getting blood clots in his legs after playing for like 48 hours straight. So it, it actually can kill you. So it can be that dangerous. And it can be that disruptive to your life. Like it can interfere with your ability to work or maintain relationships, stay in a relationship, or to supervise your children. I've seen kids that are unsupervised because parents, young parents are gaming. Like, so yes, it can be as disruptive as all those other things. Now, what questions can you ask yourself to see if you may be addicted to video games? So there's a difference between like an obsession and being addicted. So when we right. talk about addiction, we're talking about this has gone so far, it's interfered with everything in your life. So it somehow interferes with your ability to work or maintain relationships. Once those things are breaking out, because you're prioritizing the game, because you're having some sort of withdrawal in between playing where you have to, you can't even be present in the moment because you have to get back to this other virtual world and that's where your obsession lives, then that's when it's an addiction and a problem. Well, how much responsibility falls on the parents? Because as a parent with my kids wanting to play the game, especially Fortnite, like most kids out there, I tell my son he has to stop playing. And if he doesn't, I take the controller away. I mean, again, how much of this falls on the parent to actually play a role in right. this? Almost 100%. And I have a kid that plays Fortnite, too. So right. I'll tell you, I have this discussion in the office all the time. I have to tell teenagers, I see the worst fights over a parent tried to take away a phone, a game console, mm -hmm. access to a computer. And the kid says, she can't take my phone. He can't take my video game console. You have to establish from the beginning, those things are owned by the parents. They're not <laughs> oh, yours. Yes, there's no mine. Did you tell your kids that? There's, oh, there's yeah. no mine. I allow you to use it, and mm -hmm. you can use it as much as I allow you to use it. And when you go beyond that, I pull it back. And if you go beyond one too many times, we get it out of the house. So 100% of that has to be controlled by the parents because it's their property. It is not the kids. The kid does not have my cell phone, my game console, my game. Now, what should you do if you or your kids show signs of video gaming disorder? Well, if, if it's interfering in your life that much, I would I would say you should get some professional help. I think if you you know if you notice this early on and start to talk to somebody, like a counselor, then you can make sense out of how to try and rein it in or how to prioritize other things in your life. Um, with kids, I mean, I think they should talk to somebody too because they do use these things as an escape. So it might mm -hmm. be masking an underlying you know depression, anxiety disorder, just problems with social functioning that's making their self-esteem terrible. So it may be a, a band-aid for something else. So it's a little more complicated, I think, with them. And, and these things happen because last week we were talking about a little girl who did not get up to go to the bathroom. She sat there and played through her whole thing and her parents said, okay, enough is enough because she ended up wetting the floor. You have to be willing to get the things out of the house if it's become that much of a problem. And if the child won't respect the limits that you're setting with them. And as parents, use good judgment. Remember, they said only 3% of the people really suffer this addiction. And there are hundreds of millions of gamers out there. Yeah. So I think they are made to be addictive, to keep our attention and focus and make us play as long as possible. It's up to us to use our judgment and common sense to say, when's the time to step aside? Make sure you get exercise. I mean, with kids, oh, yes. they need exercise of some sort. If they're playing a sport, mm -hmm. do something, get outside, or else their behaviors are gonna start to get a lot worse. So we just, it has to be balanced. Doctor, thank, thank you, you so doctor. much for coming in today.